that we have about Rocky O and first day. Yeah, I got it. Uh, it's way better. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta read my Hall of Fame speech for the, for the 2005 uh, football team. Personally, I just want to real quick off uh, script here. Uh, I had the luxury of coming back after four years of college and being able to help out my dad, uh, coach the team, uh, be his offensive coordinator, uh, help him out whatever he needed. Uh, so what I knew from that team is, is I saw a lot of great athletes, not just football players, fantastic three-sport athletes that excelled. I, I'm pretty sure what we won basketball sectionals and we won baseball state. Pretty sure that, that, that year. So very, very, very fortunate to be a part of this, these outstanding guys that, that, that come. You know, they were here today. To so without further ado, I'm gonna read my old man's speech. Um, I'd like to thank the committee for considering and voting the 2005 varsity football team for this year's IHC Hall of Fame class of 2020. This team was very special to me in that I was his last year of coaching. I'd like to start off by talking about the juniors and seniors who were on that team. A couple years back, 2003, Lord Bus was having enough players to field a JV team. They were coached by a varsity assistant coach Brian Upton, I'm not sure many of you know who he is, but he was a very, very instrumental in, uh, in, in creating high school football when it became in the early 2000s. Um, he had been over backwards and improved the football pro program, which included starting helping flag from the fourth, fourth to sixth graders. Many of the players on this team actually participated back in that flag program to help jumpstart this whole, this whole process. The JV games were usually early in the week. And the rule at that time was that a player could play in the JV and varsity as long as there was four nights in between games. There were a few of these players who were able to do that. The idea was to get a JV program started and eventually would have enough players so we wouldn't have to have them play at both levels. This specific team was very successful when they were never lost a game. I knew at this time the experience was going to result in a very competitive team at the varsity level. Unfortunately, the Frontier League, go figure, didn't like the idea that we were having players participating in both games. So we had to cancel the second half of the season. So I invited the whole team to conclude their season on the varsity level. This was tough because I had a few freshman kids that were good enough to play at the varsity level and elected to do so. But I also felt bad for the kids that were not able to move, that were not able to move up and uh, couldn't participate in the modified program at the time. The varsity team that year ended in the semifinals before losing to Bowling. In that game, we had a couple players who broke sectional records at that time. Senior Hall of Famer, Christian Spice, who threw for 400 yards, and sophomore fellow Hall of Famer, Mike Lazor, led, led the receiving court. The following 2004 season, I thought we were ready to take the next step, building off a very successful 2003 campaign. Unfortunately, we had about six seniors selected not to come out for that team, and unfortunately, we ended up with a playoff team, but not in a, um, a sectional a sectional round. Well, like I said, the 2005 team was very, very special. This was the first year where I was able to get the kids in the weight room on a consistent basis. We lifted during the summer, and when school started, there were a number of them who came in early before school started. The rest of the team lifted after school and before practice. It showed when the season began that I knew I could spend most of the time on fundamentals, game plans, and less on these conditions. Although some of the players might argue with the conditions, up down, sprint after practice, the season started with a victory over Beaver River, 48 to 13. In that game, the team rushed for over 300 yards, with Jordan Uhas leading the way with eight carries for over 100 yards and two scoring touchdowns. Corey Bolio and Chris Laverty led the team on defense with 18 tackles apiece. The next game, we defeated Lafayette, 27 to 13, which Mike Lazor dominated on offense with eight, eight for 10 passing, 113 yards of touchdowns, and 13 carries for 153 yards and two touchdowns with one being a 95-yard camp. Chris Lavery led the defense with 16 tackles. Our third game was against a division arch rival, Weesport. In that game, the defense dominated with three interceptions, three fumble recoveries, and we won 20 nothing shutout. Jordan Uhas and Nunzio Dovo led the team in tackles with four apiece. The next two games were against two who eventually make the sectional finals in the respective divisions. Unfortunately, we lost both games 14-0, 14-3 to General Brown and Onondaga. As 
pointed out the lack of points in these two games was the offensive struggle, but the defense was still playing at a really high level. So obviously we needed to turn things around if we were serious about the section of the line. With that said, we got back on track and went up to Thousand Islands and defeated them 14, 42 to nothing. The two teams collected over 400 yards, and all and a Hall of Famer, none Joe Dalton, leading the way with 245 yards. On defense, Lyman Andrew Bolter had a great game, registering 15 tackles. And we finished off the regular season with a blowout 60 0 victory over Alex Gray. Going into the playoffs, we were assigned a fourth seed, and we were awarded a home game. But we had to move the game to Larkham Fairgrounds because I think at the time there were renovations being done at IHC, so therefore we uh, there was a we're getting a new facility at the time. So we had to move the game to the Fairgrounds. We soared to a 26 0 halftime lead against Frankfurt Tower and eventually won 48 4. Snuggie led the team to rush with 232 yards, 13 carries. Zach Fazio was one of the leading tacklers on defense. And there was actually one really, really memorable play I'm sure you, you guys will remember. The Lays broke away on the last play of the first half in the 10 yard line and jumped over a would be tackler on his way for a touchdown. Pretty, pretty memorable stuff if you guys ever saw that play. You guys would be, you guys would be in awe of that. With that victory, we went on to the semifinals. They sweep scored again, Central Square. This time, they were a little bit tougher, but we prevailed 42, 14 to eight, as Nunzio had another great game, grinding out 252 yards on 30, 30 carries, and Zach Dolba had a superior defensive performance. So here we are, sectional finals, going up against Anadai. A little bit concerned, team being overworked, very, very long season, but the kids assured me that they were mentally and physically ready for the game. Onondaga is a three-time sectional and state champion, and this Onondaga team features current NFL running back Latavius Murray. We were leading 7-0 when we called the play working, that we've been working on all week. It was a flare back, and I take full responsibility for this offensive coordinator. <laughs> to our motion man. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't execute it very well. It was a pick six. And, uh, they led 8-7 at halftime. We were doing so well on defense. So in my halftime speech, I told them that if we could get one more score, we would win the game, because I knew they were not going to score on us again. The kids obliged and scored three more touchdowns, and we won 25-8. Nunzio, again, was the leading rusher, 20 carries, 145 yards, three touchdowns, including an 86-yard TD run. Also, Lays, 76 yards, Juha, 62 yards, and Zach Fazio leading the defense with 21 tackles. The, the one memory we'll have from this game is Lays' fake handoff to the 72 yard, excuse me, the 52 yard scamper that would put the game out of reach. This team was the first and only team to win a football sectional championship in IHC history. And I'm very proud not only for the players, but for the coaching staff who were instrumental in the success of this team. I would like to thank Ed Dolo, who ran my defense, my son David, who was our offensive coordinator, BJ, my son, and Rocco Canale, who are our team scouts and were always there when we needed them. And Chris Dolo, who always did a fantastic job filming all the games. I would also thank all the parents who were there for us when we needed volunteers and were 100% behind the program. Finally, I'd like to congratulate all the players and coaches who were instrumental in bringing IHC its first football sectional title. I thank you for the memory. I know. <laughs> well, that's it. 